Hi, my name's Dan, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this, the YouTube video navigation. So I've screenshotted this from YouTube, and I've just pasted it into a new Adobe Illustrator document. And we're going to recreate this as nice, clean vector shapes. So I'm just going to select this and lock it so it doesn't move. And then what I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool and just create or recreate the outside of the navigation. So roughly the same size. And I'll just fill that with, with black for now. Just move that down a bit. There we go. The next step is to create the play button. So for this, we're going to select our polygon tool, left click on the canvas with three sides in the box, and then just rotate that down and scale it. So there we go, nice and simple. We've created our play button. I'm just going to color this red for the time being, just so there's a, a clear distinction between the, uh, the menu bar and the icons I'm creating. So the next one is the volume control. So we're going to go to the rectangle tool and create a rectangle like that. And then we're going to duplicate this holding Alt and Shift and then using the direct selection tool just click these two endpoints, bring them out and then using the scale tool with those two points still selected just bring that up. Okay, And then select both of those parts and in the Pathfinder palette you can unite those and they'll become one complete shape. Now we're just going to create mm. these sound waves here if you select the ellipse tool and holding shift create a nice perfect circle switch the fill and the stroke around and we'll bring that up to I think about 2.5 and then just using the direct select tool just delete this one so we're just really interested in this half and we can create a copy of that and scale it down as well so that's going to create the, the smaller sound wave so just position those roughly like like this. And what we're going to do is in turn select each one and go to object expand. So we're just expanding the fill and the stroke. So it just becomes a shape now, like everything else, and it's not recognized as a stroke or an outline by Illustrator. Okay, then what we're going to do is get the rectangle tool and draw over here, and we're just going to select that and this outer sound wave and we're just going to minus front and it just just trims it a little bit so we're going to do the same for this smaller one draw the rectangle and then subtract that okay so there we've got our sound waves and then we can just click all three of these elements and then group them together okay now we can move that one down here. For the time, you can easily just select the text tool. And we're just going to copy the digits that we've got on screen. And you can pick any font you like, but I'm going to pick Arial. Arial bold. And then just make that red so I can see it and bring it up in size. Okay, so the lettering's a bit closer together, so if you go to the character palette, you can just adjust the kerning here, just to bring that a bit tighter together. There we go. And then that one's good to go, so I can put this down here. Now we've got the watch later icon. Pretty straightforward. We're going to do a circle. And then we've just got to do the clock hands. So you can just draw over using the rectangle tool. And pick a different colour, so I'm going to go with yellow. Just so now they actually contrast against the red. And snap that into the middle. Copy, paste. And we can just rotate that, make it a bit shorter. And just make sure it lines up with the other hand. 
adjust these as necessary and then just bring that up. The two yellow shapes, if you click Unite in the Pathfinder palette, that makes it into one complete shape. And then from there we can click that, the red circle underneath and subtract it from that. So now that middle shape of the clock hands has been knocked out. So we're left with just the uh, the main kind of fill, if you like. And whatever's behind that circle will show through that gap. Now we've got the subtitles icon. So if you draw a rectangle, let's try and make it the same sort of size. And then go to Effect, Stylize and Round Corners. Tick the preview on and just round off those corners slightly. So, and do about five pixels. Your numbers might be different depending on how big you're creating your shapes, but something that's along these lines. If you go to Object, uh, select the shape and go to Object Expand Appearance, it will not recognize those as rounded corners anymore. This is just a shape that you can do anything with. So, with that in mind, you can click it. Go to Envelope Distort, Make with Warp, and then inflate it by 20%. Well, let's say 15%, actually. Maybe even 10. Yeah, 10% is good. So there we go. So we've just kind of added that little bulge to the subtitles icon. And it's got all these effects applied at the minute, so let's just go to Object Expand again and make sure it forgets all those additional settings. So now, again, it's just a shape. Let's just go and put our, uh, our watch watch later icon down there, because that one's done. And now we're just going to add the CC in. So uh, I've still got Helvetica selected. I think this one's a bit thinner, so I'm just going to change it to regular. I'm also going to go to Type, Create Outlines, so it's no longer recognized as a font. It's just a shape like everything else. And then what I'm going to do is just copy that holding alt so there's two of them I'm gonna bring them just a pinch closer together and then selecting both of them now rather than go Pathfinder and unite these shapes together because there is a gap between them I'm gonna go to object and make them a compound path so it will join these two paths together so now if I click that it selects both of them and I can click the red shape and then I can align them vertically and horizontally and I can now select them in the shape click on the Pathfinder palette and subtract and as you can see same as we did with the watch later icon anything behind it now shows through that's become one complete shape so now we've done that, let's just pop that one down there as well. Okay, this is good. So we've just got to do the cog, or the options icon. So this is really easy, you just create two circles, like so. Make sure that your smaller circle is on top. I did that backwards then. And with that on top, you can select both of them and subtract and it just knocks out that middle part. And now for the outside of the cog, you can just simply create a rectangle. Just make sure that that is vertically aligned. There we go, they just knocked each other into place. We're just gonna move a copy of that down to the bottom. Just check that they come into the shape the same distance. around about correct and you might find it easier to work in this mode if I haven't already mentioned you can press command Y on the Mac control Y on a PC and it just allows you to see all the outlines all the shape anchor points and everything without color and imagery and everything over the top so it's quite handy to switch between those modes sometimes so now what I'm going to do is just select these two shapes copy paste in place and then rotate holding shift so it rotates in 45 degree increments 
to the right and then selecting all four of those points I'm going to copy paste in place and rotate and I'm going to do it again but to 45 degrees this time and now I'm going to select all of these endpoints because these endpoints again they don't touch I'm going to go to object compound path and make and now I can click the middle part the donut part if you like and in the Pathfinder palette I can unite that together so it's one complete shape I'm just going to bring that down the bottom and make it red like all the others okay now I've got the full screen icon you can see if you look very closely you can see there is a very very slight one pixel shadow on all of these shapes now you can add that if you wish but I'm just gonna cover creating the basic shapes in this tutorial okay so again very easy using the rectangle tool let's just make sure that we create this one correctly and when doing this it's very handy to go to the view menu and just make sure you've got smart guides and snap to point ticked on so as I'm moving shape elements around you can see the guides pop up and it tells me that I'm about to snap it in place which just means you get everything pixel perfect okay so these shapes touch so we can just click both of those and unite them and then holding alt and shift and then rotating we can just very easily just recreate these other ones so you can select these and then you can go down and then holding the rotate tool you can just rotate them 180 degrees and once you've rotated those 180 degrees you can simply select all four parts and again as they're separate shapes just go to object compound path and make and now that's one complete shape we can move this down to join the others With the numbers here and the time, you can keep this as edit editable text, so you can change these numbers if you wish, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to convert these to outlines. So go to Type and Create Outlines, so it's no longer a font. You might wish to keep that editable still in case you decide to change those numbers or the length of the video. Okay, so we've created all the core shapes. Now I'm just going to select all of these if you've done this correctly your fill square over here should be all one color it shouldn't be a question mark and I'm just going to change these all to gray just to match the example above and also what I'm going to do is just select all of those and the menu bar itself and then I'm just going to vertically align them to the center like that now the last part we're going to create is just the the actual uh, this bar here along the top where you can scrub through the video okay so we're just gonna create a copy of this by holding alt and shift and we're gonna make that gray and then we're just gonna bring the height of it down then we're gonna make another copy and paste in place we're gonna make it red And we're just going to bring that across from the left. Now on the YouTube example, you can't see an awful lot of the red. But on my version, regardless of the times here, I'm going to do this a bit more. So the video is nearly halfway through playing, just so you can see how the red fits into the design. So we're just going to push that back down there. And then we've just got to create this dial that you use to scrub through the video. So again, it's just circles picking shades of grey, copy, paste in place, bring that down and picking a slightly lighter grey than the bar and then we can group these two circles together, that's absolutely fine and with your smart guides turned on you'll be able to see here that it will snap vertically and horizontally in place then what we can do is group this bar together as a whole and then just bring it down so it sits on top of everything else okay so you can see they're fairly identical I'm just going to unlock 
my layers now and just get rid of the example and then as you can see we've got our finished video player design we can press Apple Y or Control Y on PC to have a look at this you can go in and see everything that we use to create those different shapes and because we've created this from scratch in Adobe Illustrator we can scale this vector image to any size without any loss of quality I hope this tutorial was helpful if it was please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time